So here is a question from a student. He is uh, Wasi Hussain from Prayagraj and he wants to know the derivation of Kepler's third law and Newton's law of gravitation. Whenever I search on Google, I get the derivation of Newton's law of gravitation on the basis of the third law of Kepler and whenever I search for the derivation of Kepler's third law, I get it from Newton's law of gravity. This is not a logical proof for any of these laws. I also tried some books, but I did not get an, any answer. Please give me the proof of anyone. So that is a question. And uh, uh, one should go into the historical perspective. Kepler was uh, much senior than Newton. In fact, uh, Newton was born many years after Kepler's death. So Kepler used to study the astronomical data collected by another astronomer known as Tycho Brahe. So Tycho Brahe had collected the positions of few planets at different uh, times in the year and he has tabulated a lot of data and uh, those data were later on passed on to Kepler and Kepler was an extremely good mathematician and from that data he could see that if we go into, if we use the sun's frame because all the data were collected from the earth but uh, Kepler could see that if everything is transformed to a new system where sun is at the origin and sun is uh, treated as at rest a frame fixed with respect to the sun then the path of the planets are all elliptical and uh, from that data only he derived that all those data fit with the laws which he formulated for second and third law. The third law is the square of the time period of a planet around the sun is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of the ellipse. All those things were derived not from some basic principles but from the data which were available to Kepler. So that is this. Then uh, comes Newton. And when Newton looks at the gravitation, the acceleration of a falling apple, for example, and acceleration of the moon around the earth. Then he finds once again from these data, once again from these experimental observations, what is the acceleration of the moon? It goes in a circular path, completes in some 28 days or so. So from there you can calculate what is that uh, omega square r or v square by r. And from there, you can see what is the acceleration of the moon due to the attraction of the earth, right? And then uh, acceleration of the falling objects near the earth's surface, that also experimentally measurable quantities. So from those comparisons, Newton came to this conclusion of uh, law of gravitation that uh, the force should be proportional to 1 by R square. So both these are derived from the experimental informations but then yes, if uh, the Newton's the third, Newton's law of gravitation is a basic theory, a basic theory and with that theory if you apply it to the planets then uh, the Kepler's third law is easily derivable. And if you take that uh, new Kepler's third law as a uh, standard thing, you know that. So that is possible only if the force is of that 1 by r square type and proportional to masses of course. So this is the interdependence of these two. If you use Kepler's third law and what kind of force will give you this result? Yes, is the Newton's gravitational law which will give you this result. Okay. And if you take that uh, Newton's uh, rules, Newton's law as the basic fundamental and apply it, what will happen to the planet? Then you will say yes, what Kepler had uh, observed is consistent with these Newton's law of gravitation. So that's the story. 
Don't try to derive anyone from the other, although they are both derivable and you can enjoy that mathematics also, how to do this, how to do that. But ultimately, ultimately each of them came from experimental observations.